joggers the move here or what? I heard the animals, is that, can't see him. Is that a prop for Africa attire? Really good. Thanks, man. What do you think's gonna happen today? I think everybody's. So everybody did bad yesterday. Yeah. I think today's the day. You better knock. You better knock on that freaking wood right there, son. Thanks. You, 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 you. That's you are what I'm after today. That is an orcs. I'm after an orcs today. Or warthog. Or I mean, there's actually a handful of animals in here that I wouldn't mind shooting. Not gonna shoot a giraffe, probably. Not gonna shoot a cheetah or a leopard. Probably not gonna shoot you because you're just freaking massive. But you, yep, you, yep, you're going down. We're hunting today. It is early in the freaking morning, folks. It's so cold here. No one told me it's gonna be this cold in Africa. Everyone's like, yeah, it's winter. Bring a jacket. Listen here, I'm from Nebraska. This dude's from Minnesota. And we're both like, oh shoot, it's freaking cold here. I mean like real cold. It's not that it'd be super cold if you were like, walking around and hiking, but we're probably gonna have to drive around in the truck for a while. What we're doing today is we're spot and stalking. We don't hunt in the blinds with rifles or anything like that. We spot and stalk. So essentially we kind of drive around, whether we see the animals first or not, you know, maybe the guides think, hey, this might be a good area to walk. We jump out, I grab a gun, he grabs the camera and we walk. We've been walking a lot lately. I'm actually surprised we're not sore, honestly, but basically we walk and walk and walk and stalk and hope to get close enough to take a shot at some of the animals that are here. So we need some breakfast, so I need some coffee. I need some warm food in my belly. And I need to not think about how cold I'm about to be in like an hour. Morning. Morning. It smells good in here. Wow, you look real excited right now. Look at that, look at the face. It was chilly last night. Were you cold last night? This morning when I woke up at all. Yeah, it's pretty cold out here. Yeah. I woke up at 12.30 again and I was like, no, not again. <laughs> Did you go back to sleep? I went back to sleep and then I woke up like every other. Spotch. Hey buddy. Good luck. Look at the rig you got. You driving? I wanna see I wanna see you drive this thing. Dang. Oh, I forgot. Forgot we're in a different country. Are you cold right now? I'm freezing. You look like you're shaking, dude. You are shaking right now. You think it's gonna happen or you're in you're in shorts. Oh yeah. You crazy? African style. Bro, y'all are nuts. All right, well, Mole Mans, you're rocking the bow. Good luck, buddy. You got this. We're getting ready to head out here. It is freezing this morning, though. Mole Man is literally shaking. It's like the first time I've worn, I haven't worn a jacket like this in six months, and I'm still freezing. I came way underprepared for this. Did not realize how cold it'd be here in Africa, but boys are headed out. We're getting ready to get rigged up here, head on an adventure, see what we see. The goal today, Warthog, Oryx. But there's a couple other animals, too, that I wouldn't mind shooting, but Oryx for sure, and a Warthog are the two on my list. So far, sun's actually starting to come up now, it's starting to warm up a little bit, but so far we've seen a porcupine, which you can't hunt, bummer, I know, and some kudus, which I'm not after a kudu. There's nothing wrong with kudus, kudus are dope, but a lot of the other guys are after kudus, so I kinda wanna do something a little bit different. Again, top of my list is definitely oryx, but there are a ton of animals out here that are super cool, but right now we're honestly just kind of on a safari. I mean, look at this. You can't really see it because the sun's really bad, but you're all shadowed, but <laughs> it is absolutely beautiful out here. Right now, I'm just trying to absorb as much as I can, soak up, soak up the scenery a little bit, and not really worry about pulling the trigger right now. I really just kind of want to kind of venture around and see, and then once the sun gets up a little bit, you know, our guide said that the animals start to get a little bit more active here in probably the next 30 to 45 minutes. Once that happens, we'll probably jump off the truck and start walking, see if we can spot anything. That's kind of the whole idea right now. We're just kind of taking a gander, enjoying all of what Africa has to offer. And then we're gonna start hiking. Hike, hike, hike all freaking day. See if we can find something to shoot. All right, it's time to start walking. Sun's up, I think we're gonna just start kind of walking around and see what we can find here, but hoping for an Oryx right now. That sun feels so good, dude, <laughs> so good. So much from the beginning. Yeah. We spotted some, but sorry, they spotted us. Yeah, they spotted, yeah, they spotted us. We spotted some. They spotted us first. We tracked them for probably half a mile, but they're on to us. So we're gonna head back to the car and, and keep going to the next spot. But good sign. That's a giant bull oryx. <sighs> it gets me excited. Nice two cows, but they don't look very good. 
and we just saw two cows. Not what we're after, after the bulls. Bulls and cows actually look really similar with the oryx, but bulls are a lot bigger, can be bigger, and have, they have thicker horns, right? Yeah. Thicker horns, so that's kind of what we're after right now, but we're still seeing some, kind of just slowly driving until we kind of start seeing some, and then once we start seeing some, we'll start kind of walking around and try to stock up on one, but thank God the sun's out. Finally warm, my legs are starting to thaw out now. It's game time now, boys. We're getting serious. We're gonna hop out here. You said there's a, how far is the ridge, you think? Uh, it's probably a, a six, seven hundred yards away. Six, seven hundred yards, there's a ridge, so we're gonna go walk up to it. So basically you go over the ridge and there's like kind of a big open space that a lot of animals can, can hang out in, maybe. I'm not sure what they're gonna be, but we're gonna get out here and start walking. Throw these in your pocket, you never know. Okay. Spray and pray, baby. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> you gotta roll that. That's all the beast. No, they make like a sharp sound. Sound. Like whistle? Yeah. Yeah, I heard it. Might have some wildebeest. It's a good bull. We're gonna wait for it to turn broadside. If they run, they run the turn now. If he stops and he give you a call. So we snuck across the ridge, and just like we thought, there's a whole herd of wildebeest because we could hear them. They make a high pitch, like high pitch squeal. There was one big bull in the whole herd, and he was looking at me, so I didn't have a shot. By the time he turned, and I was ready. They all took off, but that was sick. That was the first time we've seen wildebeest yet. The entire herd of them. So I think we're gonna we're gonna keep stocking the same herd. Let them kind of go settle down. <laughs> Try to sneak up on them again. All right. So now we're back out walking. We saw a herd of orcs. That were I think there's one bull maybe. I'm going after bulls, but then they also saw there's a giant cow. And kind of what we're doing again. It's I mean, it's similar to pretty much any other hunting. Scouting for ducks, you know, taking a horse back through the mountains for elk. Same thing. Once we start seeing animals, seeing tracks, you get out and try to put a stock on them, but I don't see them. As we were putting a stock on the oryx, we see a herd of blue wildebeest. Not sure which one we're going to try to stock, but I think the oryx are on to us. I don't think the wildebeest know we're here. On the shoulder, in the center of the shoulder. Now he's with his ass towards you. That one. They normally go, you shoot him in the lungs. Yeah. They normally go, but we're gonna check it out now. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if I got him or not, but I think I hit him. That's good, that means I hit him. I don't know if I got a really good vital shot on him, but we got blood. There he is, right there. Hey, well done, we buddy. We got him. <laughs> <laughs> we that, see him. That feels better. Yes. We, whoo, I was nervous, dude. I was like. Yeah, you were like shaking. I was like, oh, please don't tell me I missed. Oh, we got him. Yes. Oh my gosh, dude. You see this one is groomed off? That's perfect. Well done, eh, buddy. Woo. Good shot. Look at the tusks, dude. <sighs> Wart hog down, baby. 
this was the one on my list I wanted. That's crazy. We were stocking Oryx, then saw wildebeest, and then saw warthogs, and ended up taking a shot on this guy. Right here? Yeah, and the yeah that's why they call him a warthog. Warts? This one underneath the eye. That's to protect them when they're fighting. To protect the eyes, so they grow these warts to protect the eyes so they don't get hit with the tusks. This is crazy. I don't know how we're doing that. Who shot that? Who shot that? Good. Judd? Judd, yeah. Oh, Judd shot the Impala. Nice. Well, we just made it to the cleaning station. I think it's time to clean this this warthog here. This should be interesting. They're, I mean, they're very similar to the wild hog. I've, I've actually killed a wild boar, wild hog, whatever you call it, in Texas. I'm sure, it's gonna be somewhat similar, but what I've, again, what I've been told is the meat sucks. So hey, we'll see if it's, it can't be borscht and possum. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is the next day. Um, we've actually had quite a bit of time for, you know, the warthog to kind of cool off and just chill. And honestly, we've just been kind of brainstorming. Like, how should we cook this thing? I've heard that it's not the greatest. Um, you can make like pot roast and stuff. It really take time, but you guys know me, impatient when it comes to cooking. I usually just throw it in some fry and stuff. But we do have Mad Chef with us. And he's gonna he's gonna help us along the way. <laughs> We're gonna see what, what he comes up with here. We're gonna go to the meat locker and see, see what we can find. See what kind of piece of meat we're gonna get from the warthog and how we're gonna cook it. You guys stay tuned. So we are now in the kitchen. Mad Chef had the idea of doing a very quick stir fry, which is not something I would think of. You guys know me. I've got two ingredients, Franks and flour. Not doing that. We're staying away from that for this whole trip. So we're gonna try to whip up a quick stir fry and see what it tastes like. I've only, honestly, I've had a beef, like beef stir fry and chicken stir fry. I've never had warthog stir fry. I don't know if anybody ever has. So we're gonna see what happens here, but I know Mad Chef's just gonna go ham here in a second. What do you think it's gonna taste like? I'm talking to you. Oh, stir fry. Do you think it's gonna taste like pig, like America, like we eat in America, or do you think it's gonna be any different? Or do you think it's gonna be better? A lot of stuff we've eaten so far has been better. This is like mega hot, but I'm gonna have to eat it. I'm eating just a piece of meat here. It didn't taste bad at all. It tastes like chicken. It's it, the texture is different. It's a little bit chewier, more like pork, but the actual taste of it tastes like really good chicken stir fry. You did great. Wow. That's really, really good. Everybody was saying it doesn't taste good. It's because you're not cooking, right? That's right. <laughs> that mad chef gets behind the sticks and it's just game over for anything. You need to come to America and chef up some of the stuff I kill. Because I don't make it taste very good. Possum? You ever yeah. had possum? What else are we eating? That's beaver. weird. Beaver? You ever had beaver? Yeah. Beaver's good. You would like beaver, yeah. Yeah. Wow, John, you got to get in here, man. This is good stuff. Big hearty bite here. It tastes more like chicken than pork, honestly. That's good, dude. Pretty good? Oh. Yeah, I know. It's good. You were, you were saying you were saying warthog's not good. It's great. You gotta try some. It's good. Mad chef? He's at, that's what I'm saying. It's all about the chef. I'm convinced. I'm convinced everything's about the chef. Everything. Literally. He, Mad chef can make anything taste good. Dude, that is so fire. Dude, it's straight chicken. It, it does, it's just like White. chicken. Like just literally a chewier texture like pork does, but it tastes just like chicken. Was that not just insane? What just happened? How was that so good? Dude, that dude can chef. Well folks, we are back here in, well this is this is the sleeping quarters. I'm not sure if you guys have seen this in this video or previous videos or whatever. That's a catch and cook for you. I just did not expect that one, like one bet for it to taste that good. Everybody was saying like, ah, oh, warthog, warthog, warthog. Like not people that like, not the, like the locals eat everything here. Like again, nothing goes to waste. You saw all the meat hanging in that locker. Literally everything that gets harvested from us, the, the group of hunters that are down here, all goes towards feeding our, ourselves actually, because that's what dinner and, and lunch and breakfast is made out of pretty much every single day is all the stuff. Um, but it also goes to the workers here and the local villages. Everything gets used. Like I've seen them literally take intestines, hang them up, dry them out, use them for cooking. Like they, there's really nothing that goes to waste. They use the hide for stuff and everything else. But as far as, you know, comparing it to other animals that are around here, like maybe an orcs 
or a kudu or anything like that, everybody's saying the warthog is the least tasty thing. So with that being said, if that's the least tasty thing that we're going to have all week, man, I'm really excited to see what we can get the rest of the trip here in Africa. The trip, the journey is just now starting. We've got a long, long road ahead and we're going to be here for several more days hunting down big game, small game, all sorts of game. The whole idea is to come here, experience Africa, soak in all the wildlife and do a ton of catch and cooks to really just wrap my head around the lifestyle around here, what people around here eat, what they hunt, what they do, everything else like that. It's not just a hunting trip. It's about kind of encompassing the whole experience. So anyways, with that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you guys enjoyed the Africa series, let me know in the comment section down below. Remember, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. If you're not subscribed, you're going to miss out because I'm telling you, although this was a very fire catch and cook, I promise you there's probably going to be more. Prom promise you there's probably. That's probably, you guys get the point. There's going to be bigger and better videos coming on down the line from the Africa series. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't. Again, like this video, drop a comment down below. What country, what epic trip should we go on next? Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace.